In this Steam multiplayer tutorial, I will show you how to display all the public lobbies that are currently open, how your player will be able to browse them, and also how to allow the player to join these lobbies. If you want access to the source code of this tutorial, and all of my previous and future tutorials, please become a Patreon with the link down below. Now let's get started. Okay, so the first step is to set up all of our UI inside of Unity. I've gone ahead and added another button, this one just says lobbies. I also have an empty game object, and if I just enable this and disable both of these buttons, inside of here I have two things. First of all, I have this button that says back. I also have a scroll view, which we will be using to display all of our lobbies. Inside of here, I've removed the horizontal bar, and inside of the viewport in the content, I've added a content size filter and a vertical layout group. Feel free to play around with these settings, but they basically make it so that all of our lobbies are displayed nicely in the center with some spacing. Okay, so before making any scripts, we want to create a game object that will basically hold the name of the lobbies and also hold a button that allows us to join them. We'll be using those game objects to create them inside of the content for all of the lobbies that are currently open. So I'm going to right click my content and create and add a new empty object. I am going to call this lobby entry item. Okay, so inside of here I added an image for my background. I also added a text called lobby name and a button that says join right now. What I now will do is drag this into prefabs and remove it from the current content. Now, as you can tell, this is going to hold the data about our lobby. So to do this, we need to add a new component. And I'm going to call the script lobby data entry. Okay, so at the top we are going to add two new user methods, the first one being unity engine.ui and the second one being Steamworks. Both of these functions can also be removed. Okay, so let's start by making the variables for all of our data. We'll start with a public C Steam ID called lobby ID. We'll then make a public string called lobby name. Then make a public text called lobby name text. Okay, so there's actually two functions we need here. The first one will be a public void set lobby data. And just like the name says, we're going to set the data about this lobby in here. So for this, I'm going to just set the name as that is the only data that I need to set. So I'm going to do lobby name dot text dot text equals lobby name. Now that is all good, but sometimes the lobby name might be empty. And if that is the case, we still want the text to equal something. Otherwise it looks a little bit weird. So I'm going to check if our lobby name is equal to empty. And if it isn't, and if it equals empty, I'm going to then move this into here. And if it is empty, I'm just going to set it to empty. The final function will be a public void join lobby. And this is the function that will be linked to our button. Okay, so inside of here we want to access a function that allows us to join a lobby. Now unfortunately this function doesn't exist yet, so let's quickly make it. Inside of the Steam lobby script, I'm going to add a new function. This will be a public void join lobby. Now to know what lobby we need to join, we need to actually pass in a C Steam ID called lobby ID. And in here we'll reference Steam matchmaking dot join lobby. And then for the lobby ID, we'll just pass in the lobby ID. Back in our lobby data entry script, we can just reference steam lobby dot instance dot join lobby. And for the variable, we'll pass in our lobby ID. Awesome, the script is finished. Let's go back into Unity. Now inside of Unity, I'm going to drag in my text here. And on the button itself, I'm going to add a new onClick method, drag in my lobby entry item, and give it the join lobby function. So instead of the main menu scene, we want to have a script that will control all of the lobbies, such as displaying them, destroying them, and whatnot. So for this, I'm going to add an empty game object, and I'm going to call this lobbies manager. And I'm going to add a new script called lobbies list manager. Now instead of the script, I'm going to remove both methods, and I'm going to add a new using method, using dots, using Steamworks. And there's going to be four functions that we'll be using in this script. But before we do that, we want to make some variables. So I'm going to start by making some public game objects. The first one will be our lobbies menu, which is the empty game object that we created in the scene. The second game object will be our lobby data item prefab which is the item prefab we created. And the third will be our lobby list content, which is where we will be creating all of these prefabs. I'm also going to add two more game objects, which will reference our button, so lobbies button, and also the host button, which we will use to disable and enable whenever we want to open up this menu. The final thing I need to do is actually create a public list, and this will be a list of game objects. In our case, this will be a list of lobbies, which will equal new list, game object like so. And this will hold all of our lobby game objects in. Okay, so that is everything with the variables. However, to access any of these, we need to have a reference to our lobby list manager. And I'm going to do this by making a public static instance. So I'm going to make a public static lobbies list manager, and I'm going to call it instance. Then I'm going to make a awake function, inside of which I'm going to check if instance is equal to null. And if that is the case, I'm going to set the instance to equal this. 
Okay, with that complete, we can actually start making the actual functions for the lobbies. So there are three functions we need to create. One which will be linked to the button and that will make everything disabled and it will call the right functions. The second one will be for displaying all of the lobbies and the third one will be for destroying them. The reason we need a destroy function is basically because whenever we want to load new lobbies, we need to destroy the ones that are currently there so that we don't have any duplicates. I'm going to start by making the destroying function as it's the simplest one. So let's make a public void destroy lobbies. And instead of here, we want to destroy all of the lobbies that are in this list. So for this, I will use a for each loop and for each game object lobby item in list of lobbies, I will call destroy and I will destroy the lobby item. Once everything is destroyed, I am going to grab our list and I'm just going to clear it. Okay, this function is now complete. Let's now make the function for displaying the lobbies. So let's make a public void display lobbies. Now inside of the function, we want to pass in two variables. The first will be a list of C Steam IDs which will be a list that has all of the Steam IDs for our lobbies. And I'm going to call this lobby IDs. And then finally, we want to reference a callback that we'll be creating in the Steam lobby script. Now this callback is lobby data updated, and I'm just going to call it result. Okay, so inside of here, we want to create all of our lobbies. For this, I'm going to create a for loop. As long as i is smaller than our lobby IDs dot count, i plus plus. This will basically allow us to loop through all of the lobby IDs in the list. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a precaution check to check if our lobby IDs I dot steam ID is equal to the result steam ID lobby. And the reason I'm doing this is because sometimes we might get the wrong lobby ID and we need to check if it actually does exist. And if it does exist, well, we want to create the item. So let's make a reference to a game object. Let's call this created item and make it equal instantiate and then our prefab. So for this is our lobby data item prefab. And then we want to set all the data about it. If you remember, we made the lobby data entry script. So we want to set all of the information in that script to the correct values. So a reference created item dot get component lobby data entry and we'll grab the lobby id which will just equal c steam id then our lobby ids i dot steam id we then want to set the name of our created item so i'm just going to copy this over i'm then going to reference lobby name which will equal steam matchmaking dot get lobby data instead of which we need the lobby id and we already grabbed this so we can just copy this over from here and then what value do we want to grab? In our case, we want to grab the name. As you can see, I've gone ahead and added it on the second line, so it's easier to see, but you can just keep. Next up, we want to call the function that actually sets the name and all of the data about it. So once again, I'm just going to copy this part and I'm going to call set lobby data. Okay, so with all the values set, we now want to make sure that this object gets created inside of the scroll view. So for this, I am going to reference created item dot transform dot set parent. And instead of here, I'm going to reference our lobby list content dot transform and finally i am going to reset the transform dot local scale to equal vector free dot one okay so all of the data and the positioning is set the last thing we need to do is actually add it to this list of lobbies and this is super simple we just reference list of lobbies dot add and then we pass in created item okay so that is this entire function finished hopefully that makes sense and now let's move on okay so the final function we're going to make here is the function that is linked directly to the lobbies button so i'm going to make a public void get list of lobbies and there is a couple of things we want to do first of all we want to make sure the lobbies button is set active to false i'm going to then copy this and make sure it's the same for the host button i'm also going to make sure that our lobbies menu is set active to true and finally i want to reference a callback that will actually get us the list of lobbies directly from steam now this function doesn't exist yet which means we need to go ahead and create it so inside of the steam lobby script this is where we'll be making all of the new callbacks now it's super handy because Steam has quite a few callbacks we can use to get all of the public open lobbies. So let's go to the top and let's make some new callbacks. If you remember, we make callbacks by making a protected callback and then the name of a callback. In our case, we'll do match lobby list. And I'm going to call this lobby list. We then want to make another callback. In this case, this will be lobby data updated and this will be called lobby data updated. And the final thing we want to do is a list of all of the C Steam IDs which will basically hold all of the Steam IDs for our lobbies. So let's make a public list in which I'll pass in C Steam ID, and this will be just called lobby IDs, which will equal a new list C Steam ID like so. Okay, that is everything. Let's go ahead and make these callbacks. So before you can actually make the functions, we need to go ahead and instantiate them in the start method. So for this, I'm going to reference lobby list, which will equal callback, then the lobby match list dot create, and then the name of our functions. So I'm going to call this on get lobby list. And the final one we need to do is lobby data updated, which will equal lobby data update dot create, and then on get lobby 
data. You'll get two errors right now here because these functions don't exist yet, so let's go ahead and make them. At the bottom here, I am going to make a void and the name, so on get lobby list. And instead of here, we want to pass in the callback, so lobby match list. And I'm just going to call this result. And then the second function I called void on get lobby data. Once again, we want to pass in the callback, so this is lobby data updated, and I'm also going to call it result. So these are both of our callbacks. But we also are going to need one more function that will allow us to call both of these callbacks. For this, I'm going to call it get lobbies list, like so. Now let's go ahead and make these functions. I'm going to start with the get lobbies list, which will allow us to call both of these callbacks. So for this, I'm going to first of all check if lobby ids.count is bigger than zero. And if that is the case, we want to clear it because once again, we don't want any duplicates. I'm going to call lobby ids.clear. And now I will call both of these callbacks. So for this, I'm going to reference Steam matchmaking and then add request. Now in here, you will be able to choose whatever request you want. Now all of these will return some lobbies, but they have different parameters on what lobbies to return. For instance, we have ones with a distance filter, one that allows us to choose specific lobbies with a specific string and much, much more. <laughs> in my case, I'm going to use this list request count filter, which will allow me to specify how many lobbies I want to return. And I'm only going to return 60. And then finally, we just need to reference Steam matchmaking dot request lobby list. Okay, so this function is finished. Let's go ahead and finish off with the callbacks. So these callbacks are fairly straightforward and I will start with the get lobby data as it's just one line. This will reference our lobbies list manager dot instance and then we'll just call display lobbies. Instead of here, we want to pass in the list of IDs. So let's pass in lobby IDs. And finally, we want to pass in this callback. So we'll pass in result. Okay, that is this entire function. And then finally, we have the get lobby list. So for this, I'm first of all going to check if lobbies list manager dot instance dot list of lobbies dot count is bigger than zero. And if it is, we want to destroy those lobbies because once again, we don't want duplicates. So let's reference lobby list manager dot instance dot destroy lobbies. And that is everything. Okay, and now we want to get the list of all of our lobbies. So I'm going to do this in a for loop where i equals zero, as long as i is smaller than results dot m lobbies matchmaking i plus plus. And in here, we basically just want to fill the list of our lobby IDs. So let's make a new csteam ID called lobby ID, which will equal steam matchmaking dot get lobby by index. And then the index we pass in will be i. We then want to add this to our list of lobby IDs. So let's do lobby IDs dot add pass in the lobby ID. And finally, we want to request our lobby data. So let's do steam matchmaking dot request lobby data. And the lobby ID that we'll pass in here, it will be lobby ID that we set at the top here. Okay, so that is also this entire function finished. Let's save this. Now back in our lobbies list manager, we actually need to call this function. So let's do steam lobby dot instance dot get lobbies list. Okay, so before we go back into Unity and set it all up, there's one more thing we need to change. In our Steam lobby in the host lobby function, you may remember that we created our lobby but made it type friends only. This means that our lobby will not be visible to other players. So to make our lobby actually be visible on the list, we need to change this to be a type public. Let's save this and now go back into Unity. Okay, so setting everything up is actually straightforward. First of all, on our lobbies manager, I'm going to drag in our menu. I'm also going to drag in our host button and our lobby button. Then for the lobby context, I'm going to open up the menu and the scroll view and drag in our content. And finally for the prefab, I'm going to go to prefabs and drag in our lobby entry. On our lobbies button, I'm going to give it a new function. I'm going to drag in our lobbies manager and I'm going to call get list of lobbies. Now, if I press play and go into lobbies, we should see a large list of all of the different lobbies. Now you may be asking, why am I seeing so many lobbies when I'm clearly the only person playing this game? Well, the answer is fairly simple. On our network manager in Fizzy Steamworks, you'll notice that we are using the Steam app ID of 480. This is the default Steam app ID that people use when making a game, and this is the one they use when they don't have their own. This means that all of the lobbies that we are currently seeing are lobbies that other people have hosted also using the same Steam app ID. So to only be able to see the lobbies that your game has open, you actually need your own Steam app ID. And for this, you need your own Steam application, which also involves paying the $100 fee on Steam. And unfortunately, that is the only way to actually filter it by only the game that you are playing. But don't worry, you can still see the lobbies that your friends create, but it will be mixed in with all of the other lobbies. And just to demonstrate to you, I will host a lobby on my laptop. And then if I go onto lobbies in the Unity editor, I should see the lobby that I created, which in this case is Gabby's lobby. If I click join, I will then proceed to join the lobby and it works just like it did before. So that is everything for this Unity tutorial. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, thank you so much to all of my Patreons. I do really appreciate your support. And if you want access to this source code or any of my other tutorial source codes, then please become a Patreon with the link down below. It really supports me. And I will see you guys in another video. Bye.